this video we're going to use the timer zero to control the three LEDs and flash them at three different speeds. Here you can see the wiring diagram. I have now added the third LED to pen 8 and also a, another resistor to ground and I have indicated timer 0 is using pen 11. Here you can see the flowchart for the program. So we start off with the start. The first thing it does is turn on a green LED and turn off a red LED start up. It then moves to a wait for a triggered event. Now obviously it will keep looping round and round until it receives this trigger. When it does receive the trigger event, it turns off the green LED and turns on the red LED. Then it will move to the next code, which is a delay for five seconds. Then it will move to turn on the green LED and turn off the red LED. Then it will loop back, waiting for the next trigger event. So I've created a new project called Timer V1. Created the main C file. And here you can see Pragma settings. Now on this one, I have got Pragma PWRTE equals on. And I've also got the Pragma config BOREN equals on. And they're the only settings I've changed from the last video. As always, I use include xc.h library. And I've also defined the x frequency of 4 megahertz. I then create three variables. The first one is this one, which is int usec equals zero. The next one is int usec a equals zero, and int usec b equals zero. These are used to store the time for each of the three LEDs. This will be explained more in the next bit of code. I then created a void interrupt blink. So the first line of code in the interrupt is TMRO equals 8. So TMRO stands for timer 0. Timer 0 is on pin 11 and is known as TO clock. So it does mean we can't connect anything to pin 11 while it's being used as a timer. So this pen basically has got five different uses it can be used for. Obviously in this case we're going to use it as the timer O clock input. So here in table 2-1 you can see we have the TMRO which is what we've stated there as being 8. So that is a part of the special register summary bank and more details can be found on page 31 of the data sheet. So here we can see on page 31 of the data sheet timer O module is an 8-bit timer or counter and it interrupts on overflow from FF hex to 00, zero hex. That means once it reaches 255 it automatically rolls over to zero to start again and it will reset a flag automatically. Timer zero starts at zero and goes up to 255 before rolling over. We want it to change the flag after 250 microseconds. So to work it out TMRO we have 256 minus 250, which equals 6. But we also need to take another two clock cycles from it. Hence, TMRO equals 8. So the counter starts at 8 and not 0. This next line of code, which is endconbit.toif equals 0, is very important. We need to set this ourselves and we have to reset it within the software code. And this can be seen here in 4.2, highlighted in yellow, the TOIF bit in COM2 must be cleared in software by the timer module into service routine before re-enabling this interrupt. 
We then have USAC plus plus, so that increments that variable by one. We then have the USAC A do the same and USAC B do the same. We then go into the first if statement. If USAC C equals 4000, RCO is not equal to RCO. So that will toggle that LED on pin 10. We then have USAC C equals zero. So resetting the timer back to zero. We then go into the next if statement, which is USAC A is greater than or equal to 2000. We set RC1 is equal not to RC1, so toggling that one, and then we reset USAC A to zero, and we do the same for USAC B. But that one is set to 1000. And then that comes to the end of our interrupt void link. We then go into the void main void. And here we set Ansel to 0x00, Tris A to 0x00, Tris C to 0x00, Port A and Port C to 0x00. We then have to set some more income bits, and this is bit dot GIE equals 1. And that's enabling all unmasked interrupts. We then do bits dot TOIF equals zero. Timer register did not overflow. And income bits dot TOIE equals one. And that enables the TMRO interrupts. We then need to set a number of option reg bits. So the first one is dot TOCS equals zero, internal instruction cycle clock. The next one is the dot PSA, and that equals one, and that's using the prescaler and setting it to the watchdog timer. Then we have dot PSO, we set that to one, PS1 to one, and PS2 to one. And in table 4.3, you can see the option register settings we have just set up in that last section of code. And then finally, we go into the while true. It's always going to be true, so the code will loop forever.